At 16, Crystal Merzlock's life as a high school junior in Pocatello, Idaho, is as sweet as her age. She's captain of her drill team, full of energy, a typical teenager. But eight years ago, Crystal nearly drowned in a swimming pool. And though she'd never left the state of Idaho, suddenly she was talking about an extraordinary journey which utterly mystified her parents. She would say, oh, heaven was fun. People in white. She said I was in this dark place and I was afraid and I could see someone coming. I, I said, Crystal, have you been watching TV? What are you telling me these things for? Crystal's doctor was amazed she survived a life-threatening coma and was astounded by her story. I simply said to her, tell me what you remember about the time you were in the swimming pool. And then she said to me, oh, do you mean when I saw the Heavenly Father? I said, well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but I certainly wanted to hear more about that. I can't remember hitting the water, but I can remember going down, and I panicked. I couldn't breathe, but I remember trying to reach up and get to the top of the water, and I couldn't. From right there, I fell unconscious, and everything went black. Suddenly, I was in this tunnel, and it had bright colored bricks on the sides. I looked up, and I saw this light. I got really curious, so I started crawling to see what it was, and... Suddenly, I saw the image of a woman, and she said, My name is Elizabeth, I'm your guardian angel, and I'm here to help you. And from right then, she led me up into the light and on into what I believe is heaven. Crystal had what is called a near-death experience, a fascinating encounter at death's door, the likes of which had never been recorded from a child until Crystal. Near-death experiences have always been seen as a mystery. The images are remarkably consistent. The spirit leaving the body, beholding angel-like figures, encountering spiritual guides, floating through tunnels drawn toward radiant lights, reuniting with the dead. History is full of these accounts and full of questions about whether the images so otherworldly can be trusted. Coming from adults, there was always some doubt. Were they religious fanatics? Were the accounts altered or influenced by life experiences and cultural conditioning? But coming from children like seven-year-old Crystal, spontaneous and pure, the accounts have a new credibility, the near-death experience undeniable. For a child to come up and say, I've had a near-death experience, is to me extraordinary, and I feel they are credible witnesses. At least they can tell us what happened to them. When Morse published an article on Crystal in a pediatric journal, it was the first report of a child's near-death experience in the medical literature. Since then, he's been making house calls to other kids who've had near-death experiences. So far, he's talked to about 50 and has just written a book about them. Children have much simpler near-death experiences than adults. So, what did your mom tell you about why we came here today? They are not coherent stories, but they are often fragments of a powerful experience. They simply say, this is what happened to me, and I can't remember anything else. You remember going to the hospital? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Jamie Untenens was four years old when she came down with bacterial meningitis, an infection in her brain that put her in a coma and nearly killed her. Jamie is now nine. Why don't you just tell me the whole story? Okay. What happened to you? I saw, um, angels. You saw angels? Mm-hmm. And I saw Jesus. And he told me it wasn't time to die. I was floating in the air. Tell me what you could see when you were floating. The dead people. They were laying their eyes closed. And who were they? Grandpa and grandmas and babies that have died. Grandpas and grandpas and babies who had died. Would you draw me a picture of what you saw? She had the pure near-death experience. She was floating. She perceived herself as being out of her physical body. She was in a peaceful place. And someone that she perceived as being Jesus and angels were there. Now tell me about this. What is that? That's a hat. 
That's the hat. Okay, go ahead. Research has shown that near-death experiences happen to people of all religions and to non-religious people as well. Christians may see Jesus, Muslims, Muhammad. Those with no religion may not meet a godlike figure at all, seeing instead deceased friends or relatives. But there is one element borne out by the children that is universal. They all face the final choice of whether or not to return to life. 